Hey everyone, welcome back to the Camero Chronicles podcast. We are on episode three, and today I'm here with Jonathan Mast, who is, amongst a bunch of other things, a amazing AI expert. And um, today we are going to talk about how to leverage AI in video marketing in 2024. You know, we we've talked a lot about this already earlier this month about how video marketing is taking over, you know, even platforms like Spotify are using video now. So it's very, very important. And we figured, you know, as a um, kind of a testament to the you know development of AI, that this would be a great topic. I also selfishly want to learn a little bit more about what Jonathan thinks about uh, AI and video marketing. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to let John kind of in uh, introduce himself and talk about what he does and his Facebook group and all that good stuff. And then we'll get into it. Awesome. Well, Parker, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm thrilled to be with you and your uh, your audience today. Um, what I do, well, it all depends on who you ask, I suppose, but um, I run a digital agency and we spend a lot of time helping other businesses use AI. And, and we always say three things. We help them leverage AI to save time. That's a big one increase profits, obviously, and then ultimately deliver more value to their clients. And uh, while we won't get into all that today, AI is a huge tool, as you well know, to help, again, make things more efficient. And I think video marketing, something that you and I have talked about many times in the past and something I'm a huge fan of, AI is just so suited to help make video marketing easier. And ironically, um, we're going to talk about more than just AI video. We're going to talk about ways that, you know, hopefully at least as you go through the questions, things that we can do and that people can do to help make it even easier for them to create reels, to create sales videos, whatever the case may be. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start off with this. So what are your own favorite like AI platforms to use when it comes to creating your own videos? Mm -hmm. So for my videos, you know, I, I try to do daily videos, uh, or daily reels and that type of stuff. And then I do some long form video as well. Uh, I'm a big proponent of just using chat GPT to do most of the work that I need done. And most of that surrounds helping me create outlines and scripts for the things that I want to talk about. Um, I tend to just kind of ad lib. That's the way I like to go, but I do still need to get my thoughts in order. And so ChatGPT is super helpful for helping me put together basically an outline for a script that I can then follow and make sure that I'm covering the key points, staying on target. It's especially helpful if I'm doing a longer form video, maybe a webinar or something like that that I'm recording, because I can use it to help me create the slides. The I mean, we start with the outline, but then the slides. And even if it's a a spot, maybe I'm not quite sure how I want to say it. I can actually have it write the script for me as well. Um, so ChatGPT is the major one that I use there. There are some other AI type tools that I would say re relate into that. Um, from an editing perspective, I love to use Descript. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or used, I'm sure, I know you've heard of it. Never mind. Of course you've heard of it. Um, <laughs> because it, it's, and, and again, it, it doesn't come as close to professionalism is what you and your team can do. But if I need to like on a, on a quick reel or something, pop it up, it's really easy to do that. And I can edit like I can in a word processing document. So I like that. And for scripts, when I do bring my scripts up, um, I tend to use an app called D, or I'm sorry, not Descript. I use an app called Big View for that. Uh, and Big View has a lot of AI features built into it. But essentially, I use it as a teleprompter uh, and then record, again, if I'm recording a reel or whatever, I'm trying to record that from my phone or whatever, it's really easy for me to do that. The, the thing probably more than anything else I like about it, Parker, is you are so focused on creating amazing videos that tell a story and leveraging video marketing. But when your team's not around to shoot video of me, it's sometimes... I've got this idea, this lightning bolt that I want to get. And AI lets me not go, okay, I've got to schedule Parker and his team again, and I'm going to get them over here. But it allows me to say, okay, you know what? I've done a bunch of great stuff because you've helped me with that. I've got the strategy in place that you help, you and your team helped me put in place. And then I can use AI to, based upon that, give me an idea of how can I do that video right now and still get some content out there. Yeah, for sure. And for um, for those of us who don't know what Descript is, um, can you kind of, because I, I remember a little bit, I haven't used it in a while, but um, just basically like explaining, you know, yeah. what, um, what Descript actually does. So Descript is not a professional video editor. Um, it is a, it's a 
basically what happens is you upload your video to Descript, it creates a transcript of the video, and then it presents you with what is essentially a word processing document, and you can edit that document and that trims and edits your video accordingly. It is not perfect, but it's it's good. And it's, again, especially if I'm creating something impromptu, I want to add captions to it, and I want to be able to get it done quickly. Descript's a great tool to be able to do that. And it, you know, a couple things that I like about it, a lot of times when I'm recording a video on my own, I may get to a spot and go, well, I don't remember what I'm going to say. And then there's some dead spot in the video. And with Descript, I can just go in and say, please remove all like silent sections that are more than half a second. And literally like that, it does it. So based on the way I record, it's I find that really helpful uh, for the way I do things. And again, it's it allows me to quickly turn things around when I need to do that. Is it appropriate for every type of video? No, I wouldn't want to necessarily edit complex videos with it. I certainly wouldn't want to do my sales videos and that with it. But for a quick reel that I need to get in place for the way it works and how it operates, I find it to be pretty useful. Yeah, well, and I'm really glad that you said that too, because I was I I was thinking about that as you were saying it. I'm like, man, I don't want people to think that this is just an end all be all type of like program. Not at all. You know, no. because yeah, those unfortunately they're still not up to what we wish they were, um, especially on the professional side. But um, but yeah, I mean, in a pinch, like we've used those programs plenty, especially last year, quite a bit. Um just like you said, you know, and the stuff that I'm filming, like with my own phone, you know, and I don't take the time to, you know, be here in the studio and like set up a camera and all that good stuff. Um, it is just a very nice, like quick, easy thing. And I want to talk about that a lot today because I think there's, there's a big misconception around the, the uses of AI and mm -hmm. what it's actually good for as opposed to what it's not. Um, but mm. my, you know, that kind of leads me into my next question here is, you know, everyone thinks that they just need more ideas for video and it's super, super easy to just punch into chat GPT or Bard or, you know, one of those like programs that spits out a bunch of info Absolutely. On that, you know, you could just say, come up with 50 ideas for, for videos for a company in my niche, but as an AI expert yourself, do you think that there's a, a right and wrong way to go about that? Mm, it's a really good question. And, and yeah, I do. I think there's a big difference in there. I think, you know, AI is the prime example of garbage in, garbage out. If you give it garbage prompts, if you give it garbage information, you're going to get junk back out of it. You're not going to be happy with it. Virtually everyone I've ever talked to that said, oh, I tried ChatGBT, it sucked. Or I tried it and man, I had the stuff I got out of it was terrible. And I'm like, well, what did you ask it to do? Well, I asked it to write me a video script. Okay, what context did you give it? Well, I said, please write me a video script. Well, of course, it's not going to know what to do because it doesn't know, one, who you are. It doesn't know what you sell or what you know about. It doesn't know who your audience is. It doesn't know the tone you want it to take. It doesn't know any of that. So I really encourage people when they're using tool AI tools, remember, it's very much, these were, these were designed as large language models, very much to be conversational type tools. And you need to communicate with them. It's called prompting, but you need to communicate type, voice, whatever, in the same manner that you would with somebody on your team that you were working with. So if I had a copywriter on my team, Parker, and I wanted them to help me write a video script for a real idea that I had, I wouldn't just go to them and say, hey, I've got an idea for a real, write me the script. Because they wouldn't have any idea what to do. So they, the difference is ChatGPT, because of the way it's programmed, is going to assume in 99% of the cases that it should just try to figure it out as opposed to asking you questions back. And so it's going to try to figure it out. And it's probably going to get it wrong and not do a very good job. So one of the things I love to do, and, and this is hopefully one of the many tips I can give today, but whenever you're done typing your message into ChatGPT, end it with... If you need additional information, please ask and allow me to respond. That's it. That's huge. Because then all of a sudden you've given ChatGPT permission to go, okay, Jonathan asked me to write a reel. I don't know who to, I don't know about what, I don't. So it'll then say, 
So who is your target audience you're trying to reach? What's the message we're trying to get across to them? Is there a tone and style? And often it'll ask three to six questions. You answer them and then guess what? It will give you a much, much higher quality response. So if you guys get nothing else out of this today, please take that at the end of your prompts, especially if you give it a simple prompt, like write me a video script, tell it, please ask me any questions you need and allow me to answer before responding. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, I think like there's, I guess there's this thought out there and I'm sure you've seen a ton of it is that AI isn't going to take your jobs, but those who know how to prompt AI are going to take your jobs. How do you feel about something like that? Um, both in the future, like, do you actually see that happening? And also what, um, as far as video marketing is concerned, how do you, how do you see that tying in? Well, I, I think that's a truer statement than it is that AI is going to take jobs because I don't really see AI taking a lot of jobs. Will it take some? Of course. Somebody's going to be able to find an opportunity where it took a job or whatever. I get that. Um, but most of those have probably already been taken in many ways. You know, uh, Just as a good example, you and I both use scheduling tools that allow me to send a link out to somebody when they want to book an appointment with me. And that scheduling tool has automations and uses some AI in the background often to figure out what's going on. And that means I don't need a personal secretary because I don't need somebody to manage my calendar like maybe I did 20 or 30 years ago. Um, I also save a lot of time because I don't need to go back and forth and go, oh, so Parker, would Tuesday at four or Wednesday at three work better? And you go, well, neither actually. How about 2.30? No, I can't do 2.30. So it saves a lot of that back and forth, which is really cool. But no, I don't think AI is going to take a lot of jobs. I do think, though, that it's really important if you want to continue to succeed, that you want to learn how to prompt and communicate with AI because it will open up new opportunities for you. In the same way, when the internal combustion engine came out in the late 1800s, early 1900s, whenever that was, and I'm not sure, um, history was not my thing, when that happened, within a, a, a certainly a generation, buggy whip plants factories went out of business. They weren't, they didn't exist anymore. So if you made buggy whips and maybe you made the best possible buggy whips, when the internal combustion engine came along, you had a choice. You could keep making them if you were close to retirement and you'd probably be fine, or you could learn what aspect of the internal combustion engine was going to change our lives and what things you needed to learn to be able to be a competitive in the marketplace. And AI is doing that same type of shift in my mind. It is a monumental shift. But we don't have cyborgs that are out there that are going to be ready to take our jobs, especially in the creative side when it comes to video marketing. You know, there are some amazing tools that are coming out. And I think in 2024, we're going to see some amazing things that can be done with AI video. Uh, it's an election season. Of course, we're going to see a lot of it this year. But regardless, it's not going to be able to be as good as an expert. It's going to be better than somebody that sucks on video because it's going to know things, but it's not going to be better than somebody that's mastered that craft. And in the same way as a business owner, if you're out there thinking about how do I market my business, you can probably more eloquently explain what your business does and how you help your clients than anybody else. AI is never going to be able to replace that. It may help. It may You may be able to use a chat bot to explain some of it to people when they call on the phone, but it's never going to replace that human that's going to build that relationship. Because at the end of the day, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. And AI is just a tool to help us get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've even been asked before, like, do you guys use any sort of, like, AI platforms? Or, like, I thought that you guys used AI in order to write all of our prompts and stuff. And like, that's, that's one thing that I'm never, uh, well, I don't want to say never, but I don't think anytime soon that I will be willing to trade my team for an AI tool to help me write all this content. Because I, I also think that you know, there is a lot of value in having multiple minds being able to, you know, curate ideas. And with AI, you don't have that necessarily. It, it feels like a lot more of a, I guess I'm like more broad brushstroke type of 
you know, thought that it's giving you because it's pulling from so many different sources that it seems very general. Whereas, you know, we have people on the team who are used to creating all of this, these types of content. They've seen what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. and why. And, you know, AI can't predict the behavior of our clients like we can. So, Absolutely. you know, I think that's also very important. Um, so what are some of the misconceptions that you think people have when it comes to AI tied into video marketing? Well, I think you, you just dealt with one of them. And I think that a lot of people think that I don't need a professional anymore. I can just go ahead and have AI write my script for me. It's kind of like the Pareto principle, if you've ever heard of that, that 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. um, AI can probably get you 80% of the way there, but unfortunately, that's only, only going to appeal to 20% of the people. And you know, is that better than not doing video marketing? Yes, it is. Is it better than the video marketing done by a professional? Absolutely not. You know, whether it's it's you and what your team does, or even just working with a, a competent digital agency, th their ability to understand your audience and understand your business, at least in the foreseeable future, is never going to be replaced by AI. AI simply doesn't. AI is a, it, the world's biggest encyclopedia. It has all of this knowledge. But we have to remember that it also has conflicting knowledge. Because if you've ever gone on the internet and done a search, I'm sure you found there are different sites that have different information and disagree. If you don't, not sure, just ask ChatGPT to give you 10 famous quotes from three of your favorite presidents. doesn't matter who they are. I guarantee one or two of those quotes will be the exact same and they'll attribute it to two or three of those presidents. Can be a famous person, doesn't matter. Why? Because ChatGPT has been trained on this vast ream of data and within that vast ream of data, it probably said, I'll just pick three that come to mind right away, that you know, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, and Barack Obama all probably said the same quote at some point. And therefore, it was attributed on some web page or in some document to each of those individual presidents. And so if you ask ChatGPT, did that come from there? They're probably, unless they have definitive knowledge in a document that says otherwise, they're going to say, yes, they all said that. So, okay, that didn't help me. On the other hand, if I was sitting at an inauguration and I heard that, now I know, okay, I heard that said and I know it was the first time because maybe in my case, I'm old enough, just barely, but to remember when Jimmy Carter got elected president, I may be able to go, okay, I know he started it because I heard it from him first. But AI is, it's an encyclopedia. It, like you said, it knows so much information. Sometimes it really struggles to drill down to specifics. And you can spend hours prompting AI sometimes and still not getting what you want. Um, I do think it works pretty good for idea generation but and brainstorming, but it's a huge asterisk. We have to make sure that we're telling it how to act when we do that. So if, you know, if I'm my business, I'm a digital marketer. If I wanted to write video scripts for me, I need to make sure that it understands that I am a digital marketer and I sell the following services that provide this, this type of value to my clients. And I work with these types of clients. Now I can brainstorm and it's going to help. It's Again, we still need that professional. But most people don't want to take the time to do that. I think, Parker, the problem is everybody looks at AI as an easy button. It's not an easy button. It's an easier button button. In other words, instead of taking maybe a day for me as a non-professional to write a video script and do it well for maybe like a video sales letter that might be a 10 minute video sales letter, I now can probably do that in four hours. The difference is that you and your team with your expertise were able to do it in three hours before we started. Yep. And probably <laughs> do it better. And so does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's, like, I've been thinking about that a lot, especially having to like write these questions and stuff for this podcast. Like, how many people are using AI in the wrong way and giving it that, uh, I guess, that reputation of just being mm -hmm. the easy button when it's not at all? Right. I, I think a lot of people are. I think that's probably more common than not. And again, that's why I want to encourage you give it more information as a general rule. There are exceptions, but I, I wouldn't walk up to an assistant and say, you know, I need to write an email to Parker, take care of it. 
I would walk up and say, you know, um, Parker sent me an email about being on his podcast and I want to confirm that we can, I can make it. And I want to ask him a couple quick questions here. The questions one, two, three, can you craft an email for him and, and reach out to Parker? Now my assistant can do that. But if I just go, yeah, Parker asked me to be on his podcast, send him an email. It doesn't know about what, it doesn't know the purpose. It doesn't know when, even in my first scenario, my assistant's coming back and okay, when is the podcast? You know, how long is it? They're going to ask questions to help clarify. And again, AI is not programmed by default to do that. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of the stuff is going to all come back to like giving AI permission to give you feedback. Like, yeah, that I'm, I'm still sitting here like mind blown thinking about all the different things that we could have done so much better when, when trying to generate ideas, if we would have just said that at the end. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So how do you see AI kind of changing the way, if at all, that people make videos on social in particular for marketing their businesses? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I guess, you know, probably the, the, the biggest area that I see it making a difference, and if I'm not hitting what you want, let me know. But where I see it making the biggest difference is I, I think AI can help people get started. If they're not doing video marketing today, I think it's a great way to to kind of kickstart that process. Because again, I'd rather see somebody do an AI video script and reach 20% of their audience than not do video marketing at all. And I think that's something that so many businesses struggle with right now is they're just not doing anything at all because they don't know where to start. Does, yeah. does that answer your question or am I missing the point? Which it's perfectly okay if I'm missing it. Well, so I I was kind of digging more at um at like programs and things like that. Like, you know, oh, is I'm there sorry. anything out there that you think is going to completely change the way that, you know, entrepreneurs are creating their own content. But I also feel like we we kind of touched on that with um, like Descript and learning how to actually create prompts that give you ideas that are usable. Um, mm-hmm. But if there's anything, I guess there's anything else that you can think of that has, you know, made video way better, or if there's something like in the works right now, like a beta project that you know, if final gotcha. could be very good. Um, there's nothing that I'm aware of right now that I think is going to replace us. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of video marketing. I think that it's so incredibly important in everything that we do. Um, there are tools out there like HeyGen and D slash ID and, and a number of others, and I, I couldn't begin to name them all. There are a number of those tools out there that can do a lot. The problem is, is that, those are going to be best suited to somebody that doesn't like to do video that doesn't want to be on video and goes i'd rather just take a headshot or record two minutes of video and let ai figure it out because they're okay with basically getting part of the way there not all the way there um i'm it it kind of reminds me of you can feel you can fool some of the people some of the time but you can't confuse all the people all the time i think really think that's where ai video is going to be at you're never going to get to the point and and i'm pretty confident with never that you're going to be able to confuse all the people all the time but i think a lot of people are going to rely on the fact that they can can confuse some of the people some of the time and they're going to go well that's good enough that's a really interesting point so, and I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit then, because I think, I think this is huge. So, you know, we talked about this the other day about how, um, you know, AI programs are coming out that can, they're, they're essentially deep fakes, you know, right. and, and they're show, like they're showing, for example, like if this were a talking head video, I could record myself saying a bunch of different um, you know, sentences and phrases and things like that. And there's programs out there that could legitimately take my image and what I'm doing and my mannerisms and everything and create a passable video that says different words every single time. 
like I I've seen this being used mainly in onboarding and like automation content when you're, you know, onboarding a new team member or even a new client, you, you know, you can customize it to their name and make like their mouth look like it's moving in the right direction and, you know, stuff like that. And I just, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of people that have talked about like, you know, the, the possibility of stuff like that, you know, starting a third world war and, you know, a, a bunch of crazy things like that. So what, I guess, what are some of like the dangers that you see in that? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, are there risks associated with AI? Absolutely. There are. If for no other reason, that's one of the reasons I think that that we all need to get involved with it, because the more we go, oh, boy, I don't know, I'm going to stay away from that, the more likely that the, those with nefarious intentions are going to take and go, cool, they're not paying any attention and I can do it. You know, do I think we're going to see things, as, as I mentioned, this is an election year in the United States. If you're watching the U.S., we got a presidential election. Are we going to see fake videos popping up of the candidates? 1000% guaranteed it's going to happen. Um, and I think it's going to become difficult depending upon how that works for that candidate to be able to work their way out of that situation because the, the fakes are not going to come from them. They're going to come from their competitors, as you said, trying to prove they did something, said something they shouldn't have, whatever. It's going to happen. That's where I think, again, that developing that reputation is going to be so important. If somebody can look at a video and go, huh, you know, I could believe Parker could do that, even if it wasn't true, it's going to be really difficult for you to then say, no, that wasn't me. Um, the good news about that is, is that means if you are creating video, in this case, we're talking video marketing, and you're out there and, and your competitor says, hey, I'm going to download 20 of those videos and I'm going to make Parker say that he thinks video marketing is a waste of time and that he only does this because he likes to make the money. Somebody can do that. But if you have enough other video out there and that video comes out, even if it gets picked up and becomes viral, you're going to be able to go, look, do you really think that's who I am? And 99% of the people that know you and or even are aware of you are going to go, no, that's not Parker. It may look like Parker. It may sound like Parker, but that's not Parker. On the other hand, if, if you aren't out there and you aren't doing video marketing, then nobody has any reference. So who knows? And if there's no other reason, that's why I'd start creating video literally today so that people get to know. Now, my other tip I'm going to give you is not going to help any of the women out there, and I'm sorry for that. But at the moment, there's one huge benefit to being a man when it comes to fake video. You can grow a beard. And I found out these AI tools, they don't replicate beards well. So if you don't want to get replicated, grow a beard. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. At this point, they don't, the beards get messed up. And so if you want to make sure nobody's messing you up, your political candidate running for president in the United States this year, grow a beard. It's going to be that much harder for them to do that to you. Yeah, that, huh. That's I know you didn't ask about that, but it's just one of those little things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So... <sighs> What I guess, because TikTok has started with the, um, you know, AI generated like tags, you yep. know, and putting those on videos that, that have some sort of AI, even if they like choose to, you know, utilize like the captions feature in TikTok, it will still say that there's AI within this video or this, right. you know, there was AI used to generate this video. So do you see like all platforms going to that or do you see it just kind of being what it is now? And maybe even, you know, is there something that we're not seeing with that that could help these platforms, but not us? I think that right now you're seeing a lot of people trying to cover their butts to be careful, to make sure that they're doing everything they can say that, you know, we, we tried, we tried. Um, it reminds me not too long ago, there's a tool out called GPT zero that supposedly be able to tell if, if text that's been written has been created, excuse me, has been created with chat GPT or not. Uh, that's why it's called GPT zero. A lot of schools use it. My son's school uses it. He's in high school. And recently I had a conversation with one of his teachers and, and fortunately not over a problem or anything else, but I was taking the position that I really think educators should be teaching our students how to use AI effectively, as opposed to taking the, no, 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 it's evil. We're not going to go there, which is what a lot of educators seem to be doing. 
Uh, and if you're on the other side, I'd love to talk to you, by the way. But anyway, we were talking about GPT-0, and he said, you know, we really don't use it to check papers, but we, pu we put it out there that we're using it to hopefully dissuade students from using ChatGPT. And I said, well, I'm glad to hear that. I said, have you guys ever read the disclaimers that are part of GPT-0? And I have, because that's the, the industry I'm in. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, it says in the fine print very clearly that you should never penalize a student that Chat or that GPT zero says wrote this with Chat GPT because, and I'm paraphrasing, because we're guessing, we don't really know. And he goes, I didn't know it said that. And I go, it's right in their service agreement. And I think what's going to happen to answer your question, I know that wasn't really part of it, but I think what's going to happen is that over time, people are going to assume that AI was used in video, in photos, in whatever, in one context or another, and that's just life. And before everybody goes, oh my God, the world is ending. What am I going to do? Keep in mind, we've been using Grammarly to fix our punctuation for years. We've been using spell check and word processors for over a decade. And that, folks, is a very simplistic form of AI. Nobody gets mad at me when I send an email if I used spell check to correct it. In fact, just the opposite. If I wasn't smart enough as a business owner to use spell check to correct it, they think I'm a buffoon. Because I have the tool, why wouldn't I use it? And I think that's what's actually going to happen with AI. I think it's going to get to the point that when you make stupid mistakes because something that AI could have caught and said, hey, your verb tense is off here. You misspelled this. You used the wrong version of there versus there. Um, that is going to become so commonplace that when you don't utilize that, I think people are going to be going, you're a, a nincompoop. Why didn't you do that? The tool is there to make you look better just like we do with spell check today. That's so interesting to think about, and I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like that's insane because that's so true, but we are so used to using those tools. Like I could not make it through a day without spell check. <laughs> like, that makes two of us, not a chance. You know, and that, that does make me wonder though, um, just a general, I guess, AI question would be like, how do you think we could have done things different in the marketing of AI, you know, and what it's capable of to not make everyone so afraid of it? Good question. I, you know, I think I don't, I probably don't, I don't think there's much that could have been done. I, I'm sure that ChatGPT, when they first released the interface, which is what we know as ChatGPT as opposed to OpenAI, uh, I'm sure they had dreams and aspirations that it was going to be this big, but I don't think they knew at that time. Even Microsoft didn't invest until shortly after everything had been released and they saw it and then they they took a, a very wise gamble and, and invested, I think it was $10 billion in the company. But that happened afterwards. That did not happen before. Uh, OpenAI as a company has been around for many years. It's not brand new. What was brand new was putting the interface on it that made it accessible to people. And now all of a sudden, of course, we as humans, it's nature. We don't like change. We like things the way we like them. You know, let me ask you this. Do you, when you go to your living room after work and sit down in front of Netflix, do you sit in the same spot in your living room or do you sit in a different spot every night? I'm betting 99% of us sit in the same spot on the same piece of furniture, whether it's one end of the sofa or the other, or it's your favorite chair or whatever. I'm betting that the majority of the time, by a long shot, we sit in the same spot. We're creatures of habit. When we go to a restaurant that we go to regularly, while we don't always order the same dish, do you ever find yourself going, wow, man, I really like the burgers here. I'm going to get that bacon blue burger again. Yes, you do, because we're creatures of habit. And anytime something comes into our world and threatens to totally unbalance what we're used to, and AI has done that. People have freaked out. Enough of us have watched the Terminator movies and are mistakenly thinking that AI is, that's what we have today. That ain't what we've got, folks. We're not there. But they're thinking we are, and they get scared. And again, they do the, oh, stay away from me. I don't want anything to do with it. It's only when they see what the possibilities are and the things that can be done that are amazing 
that they start to get excited. For example, simple example, not about video marketing, and I apologize, but it's the first one that comes to mind. There's been st so many studies done on diabetes, and, and I don't have it, thankfully, but from what I understand, diabetes is controllable but not curable in most cases. Well, AI has been used to analyze decades worth of research and has come up with new treatments that they hope, they haven't proven yet, but now they're testing that may be able to actually cure some of those issues as opposed to just treat the symptoms. That's a really amazing use if we could use it to do that type of data analysis. And that's nothing to be scared of, in my mind. Yeah. Hmm. So I, short answer to your great question, could they have done something different? Sure. Um, in retrospect, was it likely? No, because I don't think they thought it would necessarily take off as fast as it did. Yeah, and that makes sense. So I guess, what would you say to, you know, because it it seems as though, like, obviously you're not very, you know, afraid or skeptical of AI. But not at all. I'm excited you know, about the opportunities. When, yeah. But when, you know, these bigger thought leaders out there, like, you know, like Elon will say, you know, we we need to be very careful about what AI is actually able to do, you know, and, and it needs to be regulated and, and things like that. How do you feel about that? Well, I think you need to look at the intent behind it. And, and it's not the intent that's stated. Remember, big business and big politicians all go together. Uh, and that means if their lips are moving, they're probably lying to you. Uh, and yes, I mean that when I say it. I'm sorry if that offends anybody. It's just the reality of life in my mind. When Elon Musk said that, I remember talking to somebody that day about it. And they go, what do you think? And I go, I think Elon got caught flat-footed and wants the government to slow things down so his new AI model can get released and not be so far behind. So if you're not familiar, Elon has released an AI model. It's called Grok. I've never even bothered to use it. He's way behind. So why was he calling? In, in my opinion, I don't know Elon. I can't say. But in my mind, why was he calling for regulation and everything else? Because he wanted to slow ChatGPT down. He wanted to slow Google Bard down so that his company could catch up. Had nothing to do with him being scared of AI. If he was scared of it, he wouldn't be developing his own model. Come on. He's not scared. He's not worried. He's a, in this case, he's a multi-billionaire who wants to be a bigger multi-billionaire. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. And he's trying to use leverage to stop it. We see it in a, in a community, maybe happening at the city council, or maybe just in our community at our homeowners association. Elon's playing on a bigger board, folks. And therefore, he's trying to talk to world governments to get them to stop his competition so that he can catch up. Plain and simple. That's so interesting to think about, too, because, I mean, that is very true. And, you know, there there is a, a saying that that goes, you know, you can um, you can learn to predict behavior by just assuming that people are going to act within their own perceived best interest, you know, yes. and that like put through that filter makes a lot more sense than than what he had said. So I'm glad that you cleared that up. That Well, I that's mean, that's it. my opinion, but I feel strongly about it. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, you know, taking a bigger look at things that, that does seem like the more logical way of looking at that too, because, you know, we do as, as a country just to have a huge history of fear mongering and a bunch of other things like that to get us of either away from what they would like us to, you know, get away from yep. or, it just in order to, you know, do things like this that benefit a very small margin. Um, but this is not a political podcast, so I'll stop there. No uh, problem. <laughs> um, so I love asking these types of questions in like, uh, what would you call it? Um, like, I don't know, backwards, I guess. Sure. So is, I want to know, like, how to use AI correctly when when doing video marketing, but I'd rather hear you tell me what we shouldn't do. No, oh, good question. Let me start with the most basic. You shouldn't just copy and paste what AI tells you into your video script tool and say it because it's going to make you look stupid. Maybe not today. First time you may get lucky. The 10th time you may get lucky. 
but it won't be too long. And all of a sudden you're going to put in something that you want and you're going to go. And again, if you're pre-recording, you're going to, you're going to catch it. But if you're going live or anything like that, and you're copy and pasting, or you're not proofreading what you're doing, you're just asking to be made fun of. And I know that's why so many business people don't do video already because they're worried that the world's going to make fun of them. By the way, don't worry about that, folks. It doesn't matter. But that's, I know, you know, we're, we have fears. That's why we don't do things. It's, it's not because of gain in most cases. It's because we're trying to, to avoid pain or perceived pain. That's why we don't do things. And, or maybe we do something in order to avoid pain. But we don't want to, we don't want to do video because we're afraid we might look stupid. If you use AI to write your video scripts and you don't proof them, you don't look at them and you just go, yeah, let's run with it. You're going to look stupid, plain and simple. That's yeah, that's a very interesting way to look at that too. You know, and, and that, that is something that people don't think about a lot. And, and I've had a ton of these conversations since the start of the new year about people losing confidence or, well, just not having it in general to do video and thinking mm -hmm. that, you know, everything needs to be perfect and, you know, oh, what are people going to think about me and whatever. But those things don't matter, like, right at all. They're completely irrelevant. You know, that guy in your comments section who's talking a bunch of crap about you and your offer is never going to buy from you. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's just not going to happen. So, and and they don't have any influence. You know, it's like people getting, you know, butt hurt over bad Google reviews. Well, you know that any place that you look at the reviews on, if it has a hella good reply from the owner and their perspective of what happened, like you completely disregard it most of the time. Absolutely. You know? 110%. So, so yeah, that was a little tangent, but I'm no, it's, I think it's really I, I hope, applicable though. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, anybody who's watching this that may be on the fence as far as getting into video marketing this year. Um, first of all, just to remind you again, Spotify is using video. If there were any time to do it, it's now. Actually, if there were any time to do it, it was about five years ago. But now is the next best time. <laughs> I would say it's the next. Yeah, five years ago was the best, but the next best time is today. Exactly. Um. Now, as far as like the um, you know, ROI around video marketing is notoriously difficult to to measure. So, do you see AI kind of helping with being able to better measure? the uh, return on investment with a more complex type of campaign style that is a, you know, a huge video marketing campaign. I think that data analysis is actually one of the areas that AI is really going to excel in and, and provide a lot of value because it can computationally do so much more than what we can do in, in, in a fast way. Um, that doesn't mean human brain is less intelligent, but when it comes to one simple task of math, you know, it takes us, we were taught how to do long division. They didn't call it fast division. They called it long division. And it takes a long time to do in, in comparison to what our calculator can do. That's why we use calculators. And I think AI is going to bring some of those same capabilities to data analysis and allow us to do things. So yes, I do think it's going to help out with that. The other thing that I think is going to really probably be a bigger difference that we're going to see is not so much in, in video production, Parker, but in, in actually running the campaigns. So instead of recording one video sales letter and one follow-up sequence, I think what AI is really going to cause to happen is that we're going to have five video sales letters that are all similar, but differently nuanced differently. And we're going to have 10 different thank you pages that people go to. And based upon who's coming to the page and where they came from and how they discovered this video, AI is going to determine which of those five sales videos letters they should see or video sales letters they should see. And based on how they fill the form out, maybe the country they're in or the location or just the state that they're in, it's going to determine what thank you page they should go to so that we can more specifically target and appeal to our audience because we're able to know things about them that maybe we didn't know before. Simple matter of fact, if you are coming from Michigan as opposed to California, I can probably assume nothing bad or different about either or bad about either, but I can assume some differences. In other words, right now in Grand Rapids, as I understand it, I'm thankfully not there today, but you guys have got a 
buttload of snow, right? Yep. I'm not there. I'm in Alabama at the moment. Guess what? We don't have any snow down here. So if I'm replying to that video sales letter, and maybe we want to talk about how, you know, one of the things to appeal to somebody in Michigan is, you know, don't, don't feel frozen out of your market like the weather is today. AI is going to give us the ability to go, what's the weather like today, where they're coming from, and how can we use a video or graphic or, or text to better re represent and appeal to them where they're at? It's not going to show me who's sitting in Alabama at the moment, 10 miles off the Gulf, the same message because while it's cold here for Alabama, it's still a whole lot warmer than it is in Michigan and there isn't any snow on the ground. And so I, that's where I see AI really fitting into video marketing is having the ability to allow us to even more nuanced, in a more nuanced fashion, appeal to the, the audience that we're trying to appeal to. And ultimately, in my mind, that means we're going to have to record more videos with more nuances, not fewer. Yeah. And, you know, that's a great point because, you know, we, we do that a lot with, with paid ads. I mean, there's... There you go. We'll, we'll record, you know, one, one video ad and it's got, you know, 10 different hooks on it. And on top of that, we've got three different angles that we go off of on that one hook, you know, so you're ending up with a, you know, a one video campaign. That's actually 30 videos, Correct. you know, and, and that's something that I think with, with the rise of AI, I think we're going to start seeing more and more people being able to use those without having to, you know, hire someone like us, or maybe they do, but we turn into consultants rather than purely implementers, you know? Exactly. So, and how, how far out do you see that happening? Uh, I think that based on the technologies that I have available to me as a marketer today, um, we're there. I don't think I don't think the market is embracing it, but I have the ability right now when you go to a, a, a form or when you go to a, a link, you know, let's say I'm doing a Google ad, like you said, or a, a Facebook ad, doesn't matter, that I can geolocate where you're coming from and show you a different video based on the part of the country that you're coming from. I can know with pretty good certainty whether you're a man or a woman and show you a different video based upon whether I think you're a man or a woman. So, you know, yeah. there, there's a, there are a lot of different things. I think we're at the beginning stages of that, but I can do that right now, it's literally right now. You know, I can, I can run an ad and again, AI is part of that because it's, it's determining it. There's a lot more that we can do. But, you know, one of the, the things that we do right now that I see happening is when it comes to chat bots. So if you've ever, you know, texted a business back and forth, it is very straightforward right now to have a chat bot actually, or again, basically chat GPT responding to those text messages in real time as they come in. In fact, yeah. I, just did a, I just did a webinar not too long ago showing people how they can do that. So it's not quite there with voice yet. There are some great tools out there that do it with voice and, and are very realistic, but there's a, there's a gap. So if you and I are having a phone conversation and you ask me a question and it's a two second gap, that's too long before I respond. You may yep. buy it occasionally, but if I go, so Parker, tell me about that. And you go, well, let me share that with you. It's too long. It's good, but it's too much of a gap. With yeah. text messaging, that's not an issue right now because if you send a text and it takes me even 30 seconds to respond, I don't think anything of it. No big deal. And so that's you know where I see AI. But I think it's going to continue to do that on the video side as well. And it's going to give us options. I also think that we're going to be able to create a, a lot more of interactive type marketing sequences that include video where, and again, this is just my vision, but imagine that you're bringing somebody in and, and that almost like telling a story that's interactive, the, the video starts off and then you get to choose your next adventure, so to speak, except it's based upon the question that you have. So I get to ask you a question and it says, so Parker, you know, are you interested in learning how to AI to write content or do videos? And the video stops and you have to click on a button and go, oh, I'm interested in videos. Great. I'm glad to hear you say that, Parker. And the video will just continue. But behind the scenes, there were two or three different videos and it just branched right there. And if you had said no, the video would continue 
but it would now be dealing with the, the no or the yes. And so I think that's where AI is really going to fit in is the ability to have that interactivity that will greatly increase engagement. And again, at that point, the other thing I hear, but we haven't talked about, and then that's fine, is, is, you know, how important is that I go viral? It's not important you go viral. What's important is that your sales video gets in front of 10 or 100 people that are likely to buy from you, as opposed to 10,000 people that live in Pakistan and aren't going to ever buy from you. And that's what's so important. And AI gives us the ability to, again, cater that message. It's probably the, the base here, to cater that message to the person on the other end of that, that conversation. Yeah, because like we're even implementing VideoBot this year on the website, which is mm -hmm. exactly what you just talked about. It's a video that would be set up just like this. And it says, you know, hi, what can I help you with today? And then it's got a list of different questions you can ask. And it mm -hmm. does all of that. And it's stupid cheap for what it is. You know, exactly. so yeah, that that's huge. And I would almost I would almost even like to see something like that so have you seen um i think they're called like uh video boxes where it's like a little mm. like tablet that you mail to oh, someone i've gotten some of them yeah yeah like if we if, if someone could figure out a way to do that but have it be like in that kind of a uh, faq style like format i think like that as a marketing strategy, like, especially if you don't have any, like, well, I'm not going to say any, but if you don't have enough money to, you know, let's say hire a digital marketer like yourself or hire in, you know, a whole video marketing department and stuff like that, that a sales aid type of video that has all of those different pathways, one is so different that, I mean, you have to call the person back, but also Absolutely. like, I, I think that also could even help pre-qualify people, especially if we found Absolutely. out a way to, you know, program that and like connect it to, you know, your database back at home and see like what types of questions they asked, you know, and, and what things are they, are they interested in learning about, you know, and stuff like that, that in and of itself could get rid of customer surveys, you know? So it's, it is really interesting to think about all these different, you know, advancements that we can make with tools that we already have. And I, you know, that's one of the main reasons that I brought you on today was so that we could talk about those things. Um, so I'm so glad that the, the conversation has gone where it's been. Um, so what, um, I guess as far as the future is concerned, what are what are some things that you see happening that could definitely help with video marketing? But also, um, you know, what are what are some types of you know programs and stuff that are already out there that you could immediately use to start leveraging AI with video marketing to dominate in 2024? Well, in my mind, again, I'm going to stick with the basics, Parker, and I really think the best tool that you can use right now is ChatGPT. Um, you know, I did a video the other day, talk, believe it or not, and talking about, you know, would I give up my Netflix or my ChatGPT subscription? And I'll be honest, my Netflix subscription has gone long before my ChatGPT subscription has gone because of what it allows me to do. And as a business person, if, if nothing else, if you just want to use it for brainstorming or ideation to understand what should I do next, you know, we've all as business people got, okay, I've got this idea, but I'm not really sure where to go with it. I'm not sure what to do next. I literally have the ability now to turn on voice mode on my phone. And I know you've seen this, but I don't know if your audience has. So I'll do this here a minute. Hang on. I have the ability to turn on if I can get out of my screen. So the joys of phone buttons not working the way you want them to work. Let's try this again. Here we go. So I don't know if you can see this. I'm using the voice version. So Chad GPT, um, I want to tell Parker how much I've appreciated being on his podcast and having the opportunity to share AI tips. Uh, Parker runs a video production company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Help me come up with a response for Parker. It's thinking. Absolutely. Let's craft a response that Parker will appreciate. You might want to say something like this. Hey, Parker, 
I just wanted to express my sincere gratitude for having me on your podcast. It was a fantastic experience to delve into the world of AI and share some valuable insights. I'm impressed with the quality and creativity of your video production work in Grand Rapids, which really shines through in your podcast. Collaborating with you was not only enjoyable, but also incredibly insightful. Looking forward to possibly joining forces again in the future. This message balances appreciate. I should probably stop it before I got to the, this message part. But that was, I mean, that you know, we're, we're live. That was on the fly. That was not planned. Yeah, and that's... So not only that is insane to me, but how like human, like the voice talking back to you sounds. Yeah. And like, that's just a stock voice from chat GPT. So again, why that tool? Because I think it gives you so many capabilities. It, it has so much, it has access to the internet. So, you know, with a paid subscription and you spend the 20 bucks a month and you have a question, I can, you know, I can have it go read a news article. Uh, and give summarize it for me. I can have it do that. Maybe I've read something that's new to AI. I do this a lot when I'm creating social posts. I'd love to say I have all of these ideas of myself, but I'm not. I'm a voracious reader. So I see a news story and I'll go and I'll say, all right, here's the link to the news story. Create a social media post about this news story and then include a link back to it so I can give credit to the author. And it'll then craft something. Now, do I just copy and paste? No, I edit it. I do take a look at it. But as opposed to going in and taking what would probably be 15 or 20 minutes to write that, I can do the entire thing in five. And when it comes to video marketing, I think, again, the ideas that we want is really where I think ChatGPT as a main tool can really be helpful to all of us right now. I, I think it's too early, very candidly, to try to use the AI tools to make video on your behalf. There are people that will disagree with me. Um, I'm sorry, it just it, with humans, it doesn't work, especially with guys with beards. It just, it do, it's too fake. Can it do some really interesting, entertaining stuff? Sure, absolutely. You want to create an entertaining video of a caricature that you drew in mid-journey, which is another AI tool, and have that come to life? In Yes, that can be done right now. But part of the reason that works, Parker, is because everybody knows it's not real. And mm -hmm. it's entertaining. If I try to make it real and pass it off, all of a sudden that little BS meter that sits on our shoulders starts going off and going, uh-uh, that's not right. Something's off. It's just, nope, that's not right. We may wonder, we may question, but that's not what you want as a business. You don't want your prospects, your customers to question what they're seeing. You want to create and instill confidence. And that means doing video the right way, the real way. And you can use AI to help you do that. We could even use AI if, for example, we talked about customization. I could use AI to take a video that I recorded where I said, hi, Parker, that could then put in a a hundred different names in place of Parker. So it could say, hi, Jonathan. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, whatever. The, now, the problem is it's not going to change my lips. So if you can lip read, you're going to know I'm off. But I can do that. That's not a big deal. But to change something entirely and, and have it take this podcast, which we're now at almost an hour, and redo the podcast, we're just not there to be able to do that in a believable manner today. And I don't think we're going to be there for a while. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to switch gears here and see if there were any questions that we didn't go sure. over. Um, in the meantime, what if at all um, in this podcast do you wish I would have asked you? That is a really good question. Um, well, first, let me tell you, if, if if you've done a great job overall, you've covered a lot of the major things that are out there. Um, I think the only thing that I would say is that we probably didn't really cover, and, and this is just my perspective on video marketing, is that I really want to encourage everyone listening out here. If you are trying to promote your business, yourself, your cause, start by pressing record. Parker and his team provide huge value in making sure that you actually understand what you're doing and reach your audience and do everything else that you need to do to be successful. But if you can't talk to Parker today, you can still pick up your phone, just like I did, and press record. And just like a toddler learning to walk, 
first, you know, that baby lays on its back and then it rolls over and then it gets up on its knees and it crawls and then it pulls that it, 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 him or herself up against furniture and then it falls and it falls again and it falls again until one day they take three steps and then three days later they're running around the house. But they sucked at it before they started, before they got to be a master at it. You need to do a hundred videos in my mind, and Parker, I'd love your thought. You need to do a hundred videos before you don't suck anymore. So the best time, as Parker said, would have been to start that five years ago. If you didn't, or if you started a year ago and you did three, you got 97 to go. Press record and start getting those hundred videos done because you will be so much better at video and here's the benefit. Then when you reach out to Parker to have him help you put your strategy together and have him help you figure out how to look great on video and do this great video sales letter, the work that he and his team do is going to be worth 10 times what it is if you just went to see him today. So just press record. So if there's anything, that's it. That's the only one. Just encouraging people to just start creating video today, even if it sucks, because it's going to suck at first and it's okay. Yeah. You know, and, and it would be... Uh, to quote Alex Hormozzi, it would be unreasonable to assume that you would be good at video marketing if you'd never done it before. Right. You know, and I, I think that's huge. And I, so I do like that rule, but I'll add to it. Please do. Yes. Videos, and with every hundred or with, with every video in that 100, you get 1% better every single time you find one yes. thing to improve yes. every single time. There are not that many components to a marketing video there. Like you, once you get to the end, probably once you get to like 20, you'll be good. But after that 100, you'll be able to, you know, hire a team like us and be like, you know what? I have my own VSL written. Let's go, you know, and you hire us and we come in and we, we shoot the whole thing. And it's amazing because you've had so much training being on camera, you know, like I didn't used to be like this all the time. Like, I, you know, in fact, outside of this, I'm a very introverted human being. Like I, you know, there's a reason I spend most of my time right here, you know, and away from everyone else. I'm with you. But I, you know, I know how to turn it on when I need to, you know, and I think that is one of the most important things. And we're getting away from, or well, I should say we're getting more into faceless video content, which I think is just frankly useless because people buy from people. They don't buy from faceless videos. Exactly. You know, and, and I guess if, if your stance is, well, it's a video as opposed to not posting anything, but I'd almost say, yeah, like just don't, don't post anything because those, those videos that are coming out nowadays, and yes, I still do them on occasion because, you know, they are easy. Um, but those videos with just B-roll and it's like, you know, some some text and then yep. read the caption and you're not even in the B-roll, like, that's a problem. Like, that that's not a video. That's a, you know, a glorified copy-pasted Instagram post. That's all that is. And exactly. I say that because it's all that's going to perform like, you know, you may get more watch time and whatever and more saves and shit, but the only people that are going to gravitate toward that type of content are those who want something for free and who will sit in your caption and read everything through 10 times and screenshot it and whatever, and then not do anything with it. And I know that because I'm one of those people. I do that well, all and, time. I, and I, <laughs> I I love what you said about just getting 1% better. And it reminds me of a conversation I literally had yesterday afternoon. So I work really hard and, and I'm recording this with, with, right now. We're recording not on a bunch of super expensive camera equipment because I'm just temporarily down in Alabama. So I didn't bring all my setup. I've got a HD webcam sitting on top of my monitor. But one of the things I learned by creating 100 videos and sucking at it was that I realized I was spent too much time looking at the person, which I'm doing right now. I'm looking, Parker, at you on my video screen, as opposed to looking at the camera. And by learning that and seeing that, one of the comments I got yesterday was from one of my clients. And, and he's like, so I see your videos and you're always looking at the camera. How do you do that? Because I feel like you're looking right at me. 
and it was a realization that I had to have that in order for me to connect with you, Parker, on the other end of this camera, your eyes are not where they're at on my screen. Your eyes are my camera lens. And therefore, I need to look at that. That doesn't happen because it's not natural, by the way. You have to practice looking at the camera, not at the screen. And that's why those 100 videos are so important. But that's one of 100 things that you can learn by sucking first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there. so even when I like first got into the studio and I started filming from across my desk, I had mm -hmm. to start putting um, like a like I printed out like a set of eyeballs and put yeah. that on top of my lens. Because really good idea. It, it's just so difficult when you're not used to doing that, especially mm -hmm. because like before then I, I also wasn't doing all that much talking head content and stuff. So mm -hmm. it just it, it was tough to keep like having to remind myself. But even even doing this like on. You know, so as I'm looking at my camera from across my desk, I have our our podcast going on right here with the questions. And then over here further is the actual screen. So, right. you know, that's it. And it's a weird thing to get used to. But once you get used to it and you will through those hundred videos, it's it becomes a no brainer. It just becomes second nature. Well, and it's um, video that, that allows you as a business owner to connect with your audience in a way that text never will, that images never will. And that's why it's so important that every business get out there and start doing video. Because guess what? Your competition isn't necessarily going to be watching this and they're not necessarily going to be getting that, that encouragement and they're not going to create the video. And that means you're going to dominate because you took the time to get good at something. The same reason you dominate in business because you're good at something. Absolutely. And looks like so. So I've been kind of looking back and forth on these. Looks like the only question that we've got um, now, this guy actually makes music videos. He is a um, like a band promoter. And yeah. um, and he wants to know uh, thoughts on the um, underground and even mainstream music scenes um, and like how AI could be used for music videos. Well, I certainly think AI can be used and it's been proven to be able to be used to actually create audio tracks and that type of stuff. Um, I think, again, the same lesson I've tried to share or the teaching I've tried to share about not trying to make it an easy button is what's going to apply in music. And, and I'll be honest, that's not an area I have a ton of expertise in. But instead of asking ChatGPT or whatever tool you're using to create a musical track for you with all of the various tracks combined together, I would, much like a composer, I would try to figure out how I put together each aspect of that orchestra, so to speak. In other words, what's the keyboard going to play? What's the trumpet going to play? What's the, the guitar going to play? And, and again, I'm not a music guy, so bear with me. I love, I love music, but I don't know how to write it. But each of those are going to be individual tracks on an audio file and, and on, on a music track. And the vocals are going to be on top of that. Those all need to be done, to be done well, to be done separately in the context of the entire creation. But it's not one prompt. Write me a compelling and engaging, you know, uh, tune to go along with my marketing. It'll come up with something, but it's not necessarily going to fit. If you are into it and you want to do it well, have it help you do it just as you would the old fashioned way but expedite that process for you a little bit along the way. Absolutely. That's awesome. And I hope that helps, Nate. Um, I'm not seeing many others because I've also posted about this like 25 times. So I'll have to go back through everything. But, Understood. Um, and let me check on the actual stream itself and see if anybody has written anything. If not... We will wrap it up here. And it looks like, yeah, it doesn't look like there were too many other questions. So, Jonathan, where can people find you? Thank you for asking. If you're interested in learning more about AI, just reach out to me at jonathanmast.com and go to you can go to my link tree page it's got all kinds of links to free resources booking time with me so jonathanmass.com/linktree 
perfect. And if you guys are not in his group, by the way, on Facebook, um, and, I, and I think you just passed like 10,000 people in the group, which is well, we, uh, we, we, we have added, let me take a quick look here a minute because it's, uh, we're literally adding over a thousand a day the last week. Um, we wow. are current. Yeah, it's, uh, it's enough. So here's a quick little story while I'm checking. Well, I use, I use an AI tool to help me accept or decline members and manage the group because it's taking so much time. Uh, yes, yeah, since last week, we have added 7,600 members and I currently have almost 300 waiting to be let in since we this morning went through that. Wow. So if you're looking to learn about AI prompts, by the way, we don't sell in the group. That's one of the reasons I think we're growing so rapidly. If you sell in the group, we kick you out. Uh, if you just want to learn, it's a great place to learn. And uh, you just go to Facebook and look for AI prompts for entrepreneurs. That's the group name. It's AI prompts for entrepreneurs. You'll find it and uh, you're welcome to join us. It is a private group. You have to get accepted in. We let everybody in, but it's private because if not, then we get overrun with spammers and uh, we work really hard to keep them out. That's awesome. Good stuff. Um, And any last minute stuff that we haven't gone over? If any. No, again, just thank you for bringing me on the show. It's been great. It's been a great conversation. Uh, I love chatting about this stuff. And I just want to encourage everybody. I'll, I'll give you my story. I started recording daily videos in October of 2022. And so just over a year ago now. And my business now gets new leads coming into me virtually every day. I would say every day, but it probably I could find one that didn't. But of people that are not asking me what I do and why they should work with me, but of people asking, how can I work with you? In other words, they've already decided from my videos, they, they know, like, and trust me, and they're coming to me to work with me. You can do that too. Just commit to yourself to do video, do it regularly, and do it for at least a year. Because at first, it's going to seem like you're crying in the wilderness and nobody's listening. Don't worry about it. Because it won't be long and somebody will go, you know, I've watched almost all your videos. I've never liked or commented on any of them, but I've seen them every day for the last three months. They're out there. Start producing video. And then work with somebody like Parker to figure out the strategy behind it so that you can convert those viewers into customers. I love it. I love it. Jonathan. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the third episode of the Camera Roll Chronicles. If you guys have anybody who you would like to see me interview or you would like me to be interviewed by, um, just let us know in the comments below. And um, yeah, that's all I got. So I'm good to go. Thanks, Parker. Of course.